Send Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Keith Halperin. And I'm Will Burnick. Okay. And today's program is featuring the core members, the core team of a new, very dynamic organization called the Autistic Women's Alliance. And we'll be discussing that. But before we begin, what's with your shirt this time, Will? I'm glad you asked. This week's shirt's my new Autism Awareness shirt. I got it from the Autism Awareness Night at the Giants game. Uh, as, you, as, you, as you may remember, we filmed Autism Awareness Night last time, and er, where we interviewed Will Clark and, and, and got scenes of him pl pl and thro throwing. He has a son on the spectrum, and we got, each got shirt to commemorate that day. And I'm wearing mine. Well, now I have some brief introductions from the core team of the Autistic Women's Alliance. Hi, I'm Louise Stone. I've lived in the Bay Area for about three and a half years, and I have a background in tech, all things tech. Um, I'm originally from New York. Hi, I'm Carrie. I've been living in the Bay Area since 2002, and, um, and I was originally in the healthcare industry for a long time, but in IT, um, doing project management, and now I work at SAP as a user assistance developer, which is technical writer. Hi, my name is Cassandra Nelson, and I've lived in the Bay Area for over 30 years now. Um, I had a career in forensic science for about 15 years, and then decided to move into the arts. So I started my own company called Exceptional to Infinity, and I help neurodivergent artists get noticed and get them paid. Hi, I'm Corey Williams, and I've lived in the Bay Area for about five years, and I was a stockbroker for about six years until I became a stay-at-home mom to three little kids who are all on the spectrum. Carrie, tell us about, tell us about the Autistic Women's Alliance. Hi, Autistic Women's Alliance at the space is like a network of professional autistic women that want to connect with other autistic women. but as opposed to just being a network, that's great, but I wanted to do a little bit more than that. And I kind of took like the idea of peer mentoring um, from when I was at SAP, working with other autistic women at SAP. And, um, and then I wanted to bring that forward and match mentors with mentees so we could kind of help each other and support each other. Tell us about your experience at, S at SAP that led you to start the, to start the Alliance. I run a, uh, a women's group at SAP, and I kind of discovered that peer mentoring, which is a little bit different than, say, at, at SAP, we have a really good um, mentoring program, but they're ten generally neurotypical. No offense, but they're neurotypical. So it's a different <laughs> perspective. And everyone has different life experiences or even work experience. So I kind of found it was just a different dynamic doing peer mentoring, I said, you know, we could do this on a larger scale and outside of like a corporate environment. And not everyone's at technology, so I really wanted to like include uh, women from different industries and not necessarily women that are currently employed. That's kind of how the whole idea came. Tell us about your vision for the Alliance. I'm hoping to connect different professional autistic women together uh, whether they're students coming out of school, uh, actually employed, struggling to find work, or if they're looking for a mentor or a mentee, uh, whether it's face-to-face -face or virtual. Um, and basically, I want this to grow so we can go outside the Bay Area eventually at some point. Um, but that's kind of our mission, the very simple part of it. Louise, can you tell us about uh, how you discovered the Autistic Women's Alliance? Yeah, so um, I'm a member of the Bay Area Queer Autistics Group along with Carrie and Cassandra, and Carrie posted on there a survey to find out where people are located and who would be interested in being a part of the Alliance, and um, I was very interested because I have been diagnosed for a number of years, but I've never disclosed my diagnosis in a professional setting, and I wanted to kind of be more open about it and connect with other professional autistic women. So um, I asked to join and as one of the core team members, I'm 
right now mainly dealing with the website, which is not live yet, but I'm trying to write it and design it, and we're working together on that. And then um, me and Cassandra also co-designed the logo, and I do a little bit of the social media as well. Excellent. And what, what are your uh, thoughts, and what is your contribution to the vision? Um, I think that it could definitely grow beyond the Bay Area. I think being in the Bay Area, we're so lucky to have a number of services for all ages of people, like Ascend, um, and I think at least starting virtually to expand our reach would be very good. Um, we also have people in other areas of California that have expressed interest in starting chapters, so I would really like to help build it out in sort of a model that could be copied in different places so that we could eventually have, you know, a national, if not international, presence. Cassandra, how did you come to the AWA? Uh, well, I got to know Carrie through Twitter. I've been following her for a while, and um, I like to talk about how magical Twitter is because I've met and networked with so many people through it. Carrie's been someone I've been following for a while, watching her work at SAP, really admiring how much of a go-getter she is and mm. just putting herself out there and getting really involved in all sorts of initiatives. So when she said she was up to this, um, she kind of gave me when that she might include uh, people from other professions other than the tech industry. And so I'm an entrepreneur, I'm fairly new at starting my business and um, you know, I had worked as an applied scientist for many years, but this is really um, a new venture for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really passionate about the arts, and what I've done is mix in um, neurodivergent creatives and the artwork that they do and focusing on creativity with that. So I mix my advocacy work with it. And I just saw the AWA as something where I could contribute my passion for art and creativity along with helping other people um, with either going to be, you know, entrepreneurs or, um, you know, trying to get into some other aspect of um, maybe getting into another company or going into the tech industry um, through, I feel like my strengths are um, networking and mm -hmm. helping people kind of, you know, show their personality and show their passions through that. And so I think that I'll be really an asset, hopefully, um, to helping bring out the shine in people when they go to, you know, either go for job interviews or, you know, network with other people, because that can be very difficult for us on the spectrum. So, um, yeah, so I was really excited that she was starting this and immediately jumped on board. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, Corey, what's your story? So I'm the newest member of the core team. I met with these ladies uh, about a month ago uh, or so and at, at an Ascend meeting where they um, hosted a, a job club and uh, a job club presentation. And um, I believe in uh, what they're doing so strongly that I said I wanted to be a part of it and they basically said welcome aboard. So here I am. I know that job search is an important uh, activity as part of the Alliance. Can you discuss some of the uh, things that you either have done or are in the process of doing in regard to job search? One well, thing we're in the process of doing is uh, try to build a membership and uh, match up mentors with mentees. One thing is particularly women, since we're not on par with men as far as pay equity, that one thing that works well for women is mentoring and um, putting a nice mentoring uh, network. And we're going to start from that. Um, anyone just like work. Let's just say if you want to go to a different change careers, and if there's somebody um, in the network that has that, that knows that in that career, wants to do an information interview, or wants to be mentored by that person, we try to match that up with that person. And I'll, um, and then just have just be able to connect. Um, and then as we build a network, we would like to sometime in the future. Um, offer a core job services like you know open resumes helping on resumes maybe bringing in job coaches that can volunteer their time um, and um, and do more of that and also work with other autistic organizations like the SEN um, and then just take it from there um, 
Yeah, I think right now we're kind of a good core core because we all have different experiences. So we have, you know, Cassandra who's started her own business and is in the creative space. We have Carrie who's been part of an autism at work program. Uh, we have me who's done a lot of different things and Corey who has transitioned from the workplace to being a stay-at-home mom. So um, we kind of want to build that diversity and just so that anybody that joins the Alliance can have um, somebody to match up with that has information or past history on what they specifically need help with. And plus too, I know like a stay-at-home mom, sometimes you have a hard time re-entering the job market. That's true up near Chippewa yeah. too. So you're you're definitely a big segment of the population too. That yeah, for sure. I Because I don't know, the finance job was good for a lot of reasons, but it was very stressful and I don't think that with the kids, that's something that I would want to go back into. I would probably want something a little, a little more smooth sailing, a little, a little less stressful. So, so yeah, I think I think you read though that is a large part of the population because, and that is a difficult thing to do is to decide what to do and try to find, you know, a company that will really, really work around your schedule because there are a lot of places that will say we're family friendly, but they still want you to make the numbers and they still want you to, you know, so. It's, it's a difficult thing to, to, to do. So. Cassandra, tell us about how the Alliance is helping with communication. Um, well, what we're trying to do also as a part of um, the purpose of our group is to try to provide support for each other. Um, and the way that we thought we could do this is more through getting together regularly, you know, through like dinners or you know, other sort of social engagements on a, a smaller uh, sphere um, to try to, I don't know, give each other space to share with each other and um, get to know each other's personalities and be able to have conversation around what it is that we're looking for in work and why and get to know ourselves better in, in that way of sharing. And so I think that building um, these bonds with each other and also sharing in that capacity will then allow us to build our skills um, with being able to talk about ourselves and then also um, you know just make us more confident in, in how we present ourselves and so that's one of our goals is really to to create this sort of intimate atmosphere for us to be able to do that. Hello everybody I'm Jennifer Brooks I am the book reviewer for the show I'm Stacy Kennedy and I'm the correspondent reporter. And I'd like to ask you a question about your outreach. How do you reach out to potential members such as Stacy and myself? Do you do outreach work with the schools, the colleges? How do you connect with women who may be looking, longing to connect with other women like themselves but just don't know where to look? Right now we have a Facebook group Autistic Women's Alliance. On Facebook, we have a page, a public page, and a private group. So, private group meaning that uh, nobody else can see see you in that group unless you're in that group. Um, and that it's been growing pretty well on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been, and then we also have a Twitter account where we can just uh, post announcements and stuff like that. I am hoping to eventually, at some point, um, come to schools and talk to like, high school kids. Um, and do like more outreach. I know that we yeah. you, you've done some outreach. Can you talk I a attempted about that? to outreach to a number of either just like college disability offices and just other autism organizations in the Bay Area. Um, I only heard back from one of them, um, and that was the San Francisco Aspergers something. I forget what it was, but um, San Francisco uh, uh, Autistic. Autis, autism and Asperger's something. Um, so now if you go on their page under resources, um, we'd be under there, but we want to be more heavily represented, um, especially in colleges we have talked about, um, because when you're exiting college or high school as well, a lot of people are then looking to enter the job force and that would be an ideal time to connect with a group like ours. So um, we hope to do that more in the future, but so far the only like official outreach event we've done was the Ascend Job Club last month. Um, 
So right now, yeah, we're pretty much just word of mouth, but joining the Facebook group is probably the best way to try and get involved right now. Or follow us on Twitter. Yeah. And that's Autistic Women's A, I think. Yeah, on Twitter. On Twitter. I, uh, well, first off, I wanted to say again, it's really nice to listen to you all today. Thank you for being here. I, um, I have a question, uh, Cassandra, right? Yeah. Um, so you, you, you're starting your own company, um, and you, um, part of it is you help out with those, like, with arts, or so, like, um, is it drawing-like type of arts? Do you help out with other types of arts? Yeah, so, um, I'm writing a book about neurodivergent creatives right now, and, um, what I have come to realize about us as neurodivergent people, and especially as autistics, is that um, there's a lot of us. There's almost everyone I meet out there who is autistic tends to have some sort of creative outlet. And when you really look at these outlets, um, even things that you wouldn't think of as, you know, creative or artistic, which would be things like, you know, coding or doing design work, um, you know, for websites and things like that, um, I feel are very highly creative activities and mm -hmm. professions for people that do that for work. And um, it takes a creative mind, I think, to do these things. And so I feel like, you know, our population has a, an immense amount of people who are, who are highly creative, who either do it for work or they do it for like a weekend outlet to kind of help um, ground their senses and mm -hmm. you know we have highly active sensory systems and um, the creative arts are just I think we gravitate mm -hmm. towards making things getting our hands on stuff and so I do want to help mm -hmm. other people you know get their work out get noticed um, make mm -hmm. money off of their work that's really yeah. what I want to do is um, be an agent for people to um, you know get get out there do, do you see do you see a huge majority like of that happening? Because like I know most in the arts or so. I mean, it's understandable like that. You know, to, to do that like like for a living. That do 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 you um excuse me um do you make people feel more confident? They're like, yeah, you can like do this for like for a living and just not let anything like in. Or what anyone says, like, how would you say impact you? And um, so y you help people to get that to do that, like, for a living. Um, I've just recently started to restructure my business towards being more of an agency and providing support for people. Okay. And then also, um, a few individuals are literally hiring me to help them put them out there. And so I kind of do all of those things. I'm an advocate to help people, sort of, you know, behind the scenes. Um, and I use my social media just for free to like help promote people. Mm -hmm. um, but then I also am building this arm of being a formal agent for those who uh -huh. want to invest in that with me. Um, but, um, you know, to, to talk more about your question, I think that, um, I think you are leading more towards is, is this something that can be done that, you know, providing support like is, is this worthwhile out there to pour yourself into? And yeah, have you seen people succeed with that? I think and that our society is starting to shift a little bit more yeah. towards going back to the arts and looking at the value of it. Uh -huh. The value of being able to change society. And it, it used to be more popular that we would look at art in this way, and then it got to be more about aesthetics and decorating, and now I think we're swinging back into um, art as a way of changing people's actions and mm -hmm. changing their minds about things and the way that they look at things and their perspective. Mm -hmm. yes. And so that's also one of my initiatives is to focus that, um, you know, get people to focus on that, that they can purchase art, they can um, show up at people's performances, mm -hmm. they can, you know, buy tickets for things mm -hmm. and, and really become real patrons to the arts again and support people and that that money, those dollars go to creating um, productions and creating experiences mm -hmm. for people that actually change their minds. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. Excellent, really good. And now we will have Jennifer, um, our book reviewer, speak. Thank you, Stacy. In keeping with the theme of today's show of autism and women, I'm going to tell you 
about a book about two women scientists, one of whom was born in 1818, the other was born in the early 1960s. Both of them would likely be identified as having either autism or Asperger's being somewhere on the autism spectrum if they are fortunate enough to be born today. Unfortunately, they were not. They also could have benefited greatly from a group like the Autism Women's Alliance. The book is titled Mariah Mitchell and the Sexing of Science. Even though her name is spelled M-A-R-I-A, -A, it looks like Maria. It's actually pronounced Mariah, like Mariah Carey's name is pronounced. And she was born in 1818 on the island of Nantucket. Her father was an astronomer, and a lot of what she knew about astronomy she learned from her father. In 1847, she made one of the greatest accomplishments of her career. She discovered her own comet, which is now named after her. It's called Miss Mitchell's Comet. And she later became the founding professor of astronomy at Vassar College, where she not only taught undergraduate students about astronomy, they also provided her with her own observatory which doubled as her home. So she was actually living and conducting scientific research in the Vassar College Observatory. So she's the main focus of the book, but just as important as the main story is the epilogue, where we learn about another woman scientist named Denise Denton. She was the chancellor of UC Santa Cruz. She's perhaps best known for getting into it with Larry Summers, president of Harvard back in 2005, over what exactly is it that's accounting for the lack of women in scientific jobs today. And then she was appointed chancellor of UC Santa Cruz. Unfortunately, that came to a tragic end Denise Stenton committed suicide in June of 2006. Ever since, there's been a lot of speculation about why. No one has even suggested that she could have been on the autism spectrum and that perhaps could have contributed to it. Although I suspect she was and it did because she had so many indicators of autism. She was highly intelligent. She had a brilliant mind for engineering, not so great a mind when it came to working with people and dealing with conflicts, which is what being a university chancellor requires. So that's the story of Mariah Mitchell and Denise Denton, and now I will turn it over to Stacey Kennedy for the Cultural Report. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, so uh, first thing I want to share is uh, Friday, September 6th to Sunday, September 8th. Uh, it's in a farther location in the Bay Area, but it's something, the reason I bring it up is because I was invited to sing the national anthem, and I'm not sure what else, if I'm going to sing anything else, I'll, um, it'll be filmed, it'll be, there'll be photos, but th it's a best buddies challenge. The organization itself will have biking, running, and walking, and meet and greets. It's a five-star event to recognize the importance of fundraising and creating opportunities for one-on-one -on -one friendship and other integrated involvements. Um, so best, bestbuddieschallenge.com, you can go to to uh, look at the overview and the schedule of it. Um, anyone who's interested who wants to bike or run, I believe that they mean it this way, you can registrate. You, you have time to do it, but go to the site um, and read about it. Um, and so, yeah, this will actually be a big experience for me because I've never been to Hertz Castle. So um, it'll be in Carmel, as most people know, or past it, something like that. San Anyhow, Simeon. say what? San Simeon. San Simeon, yeah, I, I read that too. Um, got it right here. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but the website will also explain, you know, as I said, the scheduling of shuttles, ceremonies, and other types of like rides. Nobody um, ever travels alone too, so um, I'll be traveling like in a 
van with other um, Best Buddies employees. So so that is September 6th to 8th. That's the, the scheduling of the events and galas and all the things happening. So like, uh, Sunday, September 15th, there will be a Let's Meet peer support and discussion in Oakland um, at 5390 Miles Avenue starting at 12 and it goes till 3 p.m. and what it is it's a meetup for artistic for autistic people to discuss their lives and whatever is important to them um, the group's purpose is to process experiences with the supports of others discussing experiences that will bring clarity and solidarity around the challenges and triumphs we face and this is introduced by meetup.com uh, Sunday, September 22nd from 1.30 to 4 p.m. Introduced by Eventbrite. You can look it up on that. A free family fun of superhero autism activity day presented by Centria Autism. Where you can get your picture taken with your favorite superhero. You can run around in obstacle courses and um, uh, jump in the dance houses, face painting by professionals, and opportunity to meet new faces. Um, this will be located at the Oakland YMCA, which is 2350 Broadway. And that is my report for today. <laughs> well, folks, that's our program this week. We've been very pleased to have the Autistic Women's Alliance core team members, and we're looking forward to having them again very soon. So, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Jennifer Brooks. I'm Stacey Kennedy. Cassandra Nelson. Carrie Hall. Louise Stone. And Corey Williams. And that's this week's program for Send Life on the Autism Spectrum. Until next time, take care.